When the assets of an individual or company such as real estate end up being worth less than the debt that has to be paid back, we say that entity is insolvent and there are basically two main realistic options. One, if you are insolvent and don't have money coming in, you are forced to declare bankruptcy. And two, if you are insolvent but do have money coming in, you can use that money to pay down debt. After all, the value of your assets isn't exactly likely to go negative and as such, at least there's hope that by gradually paying down debt, your assets will eventually once again be worth more than what you owe. Option number two seems quite reasonable, probably the rational choice for any responsible individual or manager. But when everyone does it, we are in a paradox of thrift situation and in a nutshell, let's just say it would be an enormous deflationary shock if everyone acted responsibly. Why? Simply because the spending of company A represents revenue for company B, and if that spending stops, company B has less money to, you guessed it, spend, with company C's revenue being affected, and so on. This is precisely what economists such as Richard Koo believe happened in Japan after 1990 and in other developed countries after the Great Recession. The term which describes this would be balance sheet recession, and as the name kind of suggests, it's a type of recession we get when individuals as well as companies save and pay down debt rather than consume or invest due to high levels of existing debt. In the 90s, economists were baffled by the fact that despite Japan's central bank being willing to flood the system with liquidity, inflation didn't appear, with it gradually becoming clear that, well, it's hard for it to appear if consumers and companies choose to save rather than borrow and, on the contrary, want to pay down debt, with the main lesson which also applies to other economies nowadays being this. While it's important to keep an eye out for inflationary forces such as the aggressiveness of central banks, deflationary forces shouldn't be ignored either.